Good evening, family and friends, and welcome back to Cooking with Carol Diane. This evening, um, I'm gonna cook another quick and easy little meal here. German Cabbage Pockets, or better known um, for their name of Kraut Barak. Um, when I was a teenager, my mom had a friend that came from Germany. She was German, she even spoke German, and she gave her this recipe, so I'm, I'm used to it, I'm used to fixing it, used to having it when I was younger, and I thought it would be fun to cook it tonight and show you how easy it is. Um, it's family night at my house tonight. Um, my son's girlfriend, uh, when I moved down here from where we were, um, she wanted to have family night uh, every week. <laughs> well, we didn't get that done, but um, we are trying to kind of and schedule that every now and then, and tonight is one of them. So I'm gonna have my kids over tonight, and uh, um, I told them what I was fixing, but um, I don't know if they remember it or not when they were kids because they were younger when I did all of this, um, but I remember it. So um, what we're gonna start with first is a nice fresh head of cabbage. And I have washed this in the sink, of course. I wash everything when I get it at the store, produce, whatever it is, and bring it after I bring it home. So we're gonna take this, and what we wanna do is, we want these small. You, you know, you don't want huge chunks of your cabbage because this is gonna go in pastry. So what I'm gonna do is just kinda of start cutting it down like this. Some here. And I've got a bowl here. Like I said, you just want to start cutting it long ways. Now, if I was making um, anything else with cabbage, you know, you, if you were making coleslaw, of course, it'd be thinner. If you were making um, the corned beef and cabbage for St. Patrick's Day, that is right around the corner, you would have a little larger. But I'm not. I'm doing this because, like I said, it's going to go in... Um, pastry. So about like that, you want just little small chunks of it. Little small ones. I can smell this one. It's got a real pungent smell to it, real fresh and nice. Like I said, when I was raising my um, sons, um, there was always a night for a certain meal. Saturday night was spaghetti night, and at when I grew up, and like I said, in my teen years, I just remember it when I was in junior high or high school, um, mom started this, um, doing it kind of on a Friday night after after school and your homework and you know all that, then she would um, she would start making this at five o'clock. We ate between five and 5.30. We really didn't have late dinners. You know, my dad was home and he wanted dinner right at pretty much five o'clock. So that's when we would have dinner. And uh, sometimes they were very simple like this, and then other times, you know, she'd go all out, especially at the holidays she did. She really did. I hope everybody got a big kick out of uh, the little video I made with my granddaughter. <laughs> it was so fun to make, it really was. She tried so hard, and she said she was so nervous, but uh, bless her little heart, she just, she did really, really well. I take out the middle. I don't like the hard part of the middle of the cabbage. So I have not a large cabbage here. Um, I have a probably a medium size, I guess, um, cabbage. And remember, when you put cabbage that you're cooking it in a, in a big pot, it's going to cook down. And that's good. That's what you want. But you're going to think, my gosh, that's an awful lot of cabbage. No, not really, because it cooks down. So that's the cabbage part. And I'm just gonna bring over my pot, I think, because um, I've got some water started here. So I'm just gonna put it in this pot, all the cabbage in here. And then I'm gonna add water to it, just like if I was over at the sink but I'm just doing this for speeding up the video. So there it is in the pot and it's ready to be cooked now all down nice. So I usually put mine on high, high heat. 
on the stove. And while that's cooking, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, there's a gal that asked me about my cute little hot pads the other day. These are, they're really old. I've had them forever, but I liked them because they were little teapots. <laughs> they're a quilted material and I just kind of like them. So there's that. Anytime somebody asks me about something, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to share, you know, either if I remember where I got it or uh, where you can get it so that uh, you can have that too. Okay, so now in my um, electric skillet that I'm gonna use tonight, I went and got, um, I like to have lean uh, ground beef. So this is 93% lean, 7% uh, fat, because the fattier your hamburger, you know, the more grease and oil that you're going to have. And you don't really want that on this particular recipe. And if you do, have hamburger that has a lot of grease in it, drain it out, you know, get rid of it and drain it out because um, you don't want that on your cabbage pockets. So I'm going to go about three quarters of this, not all of it, but it's about three quarters of this that I am going to take and use tonight. And that's going to go in my electric skillet over here. I can save the rest for another time. And we're just gonna kind of chop that up a little bit here. Get it going nice. I have preheated my oven to 400 because we are going to put these in a pastry and we are going to bake it. And that's the hamburger part. And then I like just to night, this is a yellow onion, not a white, not a red, it is a yellow onion. So I like to take my onion Kind of get rid of all that and get it down to the skin part. Sometimes if they don't want to work, I just kind of take my knife and go along one edge lightly and just get rid of the first layer. Then it just pops off really nice. Cut it in half. Ooh, this is strong tonight. Very strong. Hope it don't cry on you. And you chop this up real fine because that's going to go in the hamburger. And get all cooked nice. Just enough. If you have people that really like a lot of onion, then go ahead and add a lot of the onion. But um, for the amount that I'm doing, I'll get just a little bit more on here and I'll save the rest. Just a little bit more. We're gonna work this into the hamburger and say that's pretty strong onion tonight. <laughs> Very strong. Very fresh. <laughs> you like nice onion with the hamburger for these cabbage parts. Okay. Now, while that is cooking, bring it over here just a little bit. Well, I apologize, that's really strong. Eyes are watering a little bit. We're gonna add a little salt, some pepper, lots of nice pepper. Stir it up some more. If you have another little trick is if you have uh, maybe you've thought about this kind of late in the day and you have some uh, didn't thaw out your hamburger enough you can always put um, the frozen hamburger not not all the way frozen but it's thawing out but it's not quite thawed out just yet put it in your electric skillet add a little bit of water to the um, base of your um, skillet here and in no time at all that will defrost and uh, cook right up. It really will. Okay, so I've got this on pretty high heat. Then we're going to be cooking that. And while that is cooking, get rid of my ingredients here. <laughs> I'm also going to have a salad tonight. And so I have bought 
couple things for my salad. Little bowl here. Um, I like and I like to get these ones that are uh, the Caesar salads, and because I like what's in them, and I'll show you here what's in them. They have little goodies in here. They have a little package right here. I'm going to go ahead and just put this in the bowl. So it's the one that ha that says doll that has the kit on it, the um, Ultimate Caesar. And actually what it has in it is the uh, romaine lettuce, and it's got some croutons, and it has the Caesar dressing, some Parmesan uh, cheese shredded, and some black pepper. And that's why I like getting this one, is in this little pouch right here. It's pretty much got everything of what I like to put in a salad. So we save that out. Here's the little croutons. Here's the dressing. Here's the pepper. And there's the little cheese. That's that package. And then I found today, because I like to mix it up a little bit, I really did try to find um, a cucumber, a good cucumber. But every one that I looked at, it just didn't look that well to me today. So I thought, mm, you know, I guess we're not going to have a cucumber in the salad tonight because I just didn't like I just didn't like what it looked like. It's all right. You don't always have to have that. This is another Dole. Uh, this says Blueberry Bliss on it. And it's got another little package of goodies. But you see, it has the um, spinach and the red chard. And it's got some carrots in it, the blueberries. It has a lemon dressing, which I'm not going to use tonight. And it has sliced almonds in there. Now, if your guests or you can't have any almonds, nuts of any kind, then of course leave them out. And that's going to go in here. Get these out to show you here because I am going to use the nuts and the um, blueberries, but I won't use the dressing tonight. Stir my hamburger a little bit more. It's looking real nice. Real good. Okay, and if you'll hang on for one second, I'm just going to go rinse this real quick in the sink and I'll be right back. And as I'm doing that, I will also uh, stir the cabbage and make sure it's getting soft. And it looks like it's doing pretty good over here. So that's good. That's what we want. I'll be just one second. Won't take me but a minute. in the world is that in her salad? Well, that's paper towels. I couldn't find my little, um, uh, it's the little bowl thing that goes around and around that gets all the water out of your lettuce for you. But this is another way that you can do it. You can just take paper towels and get your lettuce where it gets the moisture out of there when you're adding all your other ingredients. Just nice, clean paper towels. Now that's all fresh and pretty. Okay, and so now, again, we're not going to use the, um, unless you like the um, uh, Caesar salad, I'm having different uh, salad dressing tonight because my family likes, uh, one likes Thousand Island, one likes ranch, one likes uh, me, I like Dorothy Lynch, but I do like the Caesar dressing that comes with uh, these bags of uh, lettuce. It's pretty good, it really is. Okay, so that's that part. And I'm going to go ahead and open up, probably should have brought my scissors, but I'm going to go ahead. And, this is nice pepper that they've given you on this. And I like cracked pepper in my salads. So I'm going to put that in there. And we're going to go ahead and open this little package of the blueberries with the almonds. Like I said, if you don't like any nuts, then... Go ahead and leave them out. But that makes it real festive in there. 
And it is your preference on um, if you like or don't like the cheese. Um, I'm going to ask tonight if they want it, and if they do, we'll put it on later. And same with the croutons. Um, I usually kind of just put it all in at once. I do like to cut up my, um, these are these little cherry tomatoes that I like so well. They have such a nice flavor to them. And uh, what I like about these little packages is you just take this open like this, and you can stick this under your faucet, rinse everything off, and then you can reseal it, you know. Um, maybe you only take a few of them out and then reseal it and put it back in your refrigerator, which is nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a few of these out. What? One got away from me there. And I like to cut mine in half, and so I'll put that on my salad, cut in half. I don't like to just bite into a huge tomato like this, so, uh, and I think for presentation uh, purposes, I just think it looks nicer to have it, uh, all cut up nice. When my granddaughter was making the video last night on the um, tuna noodle casserole and we had the salad, she ate every bit of her salad, she did. And uh, she sure liked um, cooking in the kitchen with me and I so enjoyed it, I really did. Then I just kind of take my hands and toss this. And you've got you a really nice little salad going here. One minute while I check my cabbage again. You wanna make sure that your cabbage is nice and soft. Um, when you bake these, you're only baking to get the pastry done. You're not baking it for um, the purposes of getting the cabbage more, you know, cooked. That is it. Okay, the the hamburger is nice and done. It smells good with all that onion in there, it really does. It smells great. So we're gonna let that sit for just a few minutes while the cabbage gets done. So my, my salad is all ready. And like I said, I'll ask about the cheese because I'm not really sure tonight. Um, the croutons are, you know, I can put them on here just for looks. <laughs> Don't know if they'll want them or not, I have no idea. They, they're getting them now, aren't they? So that's my little salad that I have all ready and made now. It will go on my table for tonight. Okay, so then what we wanna do, the next step to all this little process is get you a um, cookie sheet. Now I'm gonna make several of these tonight, a whole, whole bunch. But uh, these were the parchment pre-cut sheets that I've been telling you about. You can get them in a longer box for bigger um, cookie sheets, but boy, I like these. Um, instead of just tearing it off like you do aluminum foil, um, they just come like this piece, piece of paper. And you just put that down on your cookie sheet and it's all ready to go, all pre-cut. You don't have to worry about cutting anything, which is real nice now. Okay, so... Other things that we'll need tonight is the pastry of what I'm going to be using. Yes, I'm gonna bring out my pastry cloth again. And these are the little guys, just the original um, Pillsbury Crescent Rolls. That's what we will be using tonight. I have bought three different ones of them here um, because like I said, I'm gonna make a large quantity, but for showing you what I'm doing, I don't need that much. So we're gonna take one here and you pop them open just like you would if you were um, making just the crescent rolls, like a dinner roll for the evening. On here, it says 350 for, well, 375 actually. So, but I'm gonna be cooking mine a little faster tonight. And you can pop these open on your counter or I just like to kind of stick a knife in them. <laughs> I really do and it pops open. So there is the dough. And what we're going to do is, I'm gonna put a little flour. I, I just love these little canister sets that I got. I got a big one and a small one in a little store. And I did it for a whole reason, that when I'm cooking with all-purpose flour, and that's what I'm gonna be using tonight is all-purpose flour, 
Um, I could write on this because it's chalk, like on a chalkboard. So I put all-purpose flour on this one, and then my smaller one, I put self-rising flour when I want to do my biscuits and different things like that. So that keeps me straight because I forget things. I really do. <laughs> so flour your pastry board. Flour your hands a little bit. And you roll it just enough that you can get it started with your pastry of getting it away from each other. Just kind of roll them out. Now they've already been cut in the um, design that we actually need, which is uh, looking like a crescent roll. And then what I do is I take a knife and I cut the line of what they have right here. And then I, I go ahead and cut along to make sure I'm getting these little triangles because that's what we're going to be using are these little triangles. Anytime there's pastry that's already made, I'm all for that. I really am. Unless you're a professional baker or you just, you know, don't mind doing it. Uh, a lot of us, you know, we just don't have time for all of that. So anytime there's quick and easy little pastries done, as the dough anyway, I get them. Okay. All right, so let me run check real quick here on how the um, cabbage is doing. Needs to go just a few more minutes, unfortunately. <laughs> Some things you just can't rush, <laughs> and that's one of them. Um, also on the pastries, because we're going to be kind of fanning them out, so what I like to do, put them all up here. A little bit more flour on your board. Make sure you have enough on here. And then I'll take my rolling pin and just kind of roll them out just a little bit more so that you have a larger triangle because we're, we need that for the ingredients that are going to go in this. We need them just a little bit larger. I just love my little rolling pin with this sleeve on it because uh, nothing sticks anymore. You know, it's uh, for years I had to uh, pick everything off the <laughs> rolling pin. And now I don't have to do that. Nice little things that they have come out with over the years that didn't have when I was doing all this in my 30s and 40s, that's for sure. It takes just a little bit of time to do this part of it, of preparing what's going in your little pastry, pastry but not really. Uh, no more so than anything else you're doing if you're preparing dinner. But three little ingredients, your hamburger your onion and cabbage that's gonna go in this. That's not much at all. And I said, you can make a ton of these. Just depending on, if I had used that whole thing of hamburger, then I would be making a lot of these. And I have <laughs> before. I've made one large cookie sheet after the other of these, pay, of these uh, cabbage pockets. I just love them. They're great the next day. They're just wonderful. So we're gonna start with all of this. And again, I'm just gonna quick, quickly go over here and see about the cabbage another time here. Put my hamburger in the refrigerator, so I don't like to leave fresh stuff like that out too long. It's not real good on it. tonight so I'm just going to drain it right quick and then bring the pan right on over to you. I apologize that my camera doesn't go in all directions of my kitchen but I'm working on that. I truly 
hand. Okay, so I have my cabbage, which I'm going to put right here on a hot plate the counter here for just a minute. And what I like to do is I like to take quite a bit of the cabbage, I've got my spoon, been one of those days today, it really has. I like to take some of the cabbage and if I had a bigger pot, a bigger skillet that I was working with, I'm just using my little electric skillet tonight. So I would take this cabbage and put right in with it, or I would take all of that meat and put it into this pot. But for showing you right now what I'm doing, I think you get the gist of that. Okay, so anyway, that's the hamburgers all nice and in here the onion, and your cabbage. This is just so simple to do, it really is. So now we're going to take one of the pastries and we're gonna take this and because it's called cabbage pocket, that's exactly what we're going to make. You might wanna wait until everything cools down because this is hot that you're working with. And just equal amounts of um, the hamburger, the onions, and the cabbage to put in here equal amounts. And then I take it and I roll it over and I roll it over. And this is why you want your pastry to be a little bit larger because you're going to be rolling all this over. And I'll get a spatula right quick to just get it off here. And all these nice little guys now are going to go on your cookie sheet here they're all gonna be placed on this cookie sheet and this is basically the easiest way to do this just get a good scoop full of the ingredients put it all in here and then just take one side another side and another side I try to take the longer side so I can tuck it under I like to just tuck that under. Just put it on there. Quick and easy little dinners. If you're not a real big fan of um, cabbage, then you're probably not gonna like this little meal, but uh, cabbage is so good for you. It really is. And uh, if you can grow it, you know, in your garden this summer, you would have these for a long time to be making for your gifts. And they are quite filling, they really are. So this and my salad and for dessert tonight, we're actually having more of my cheesecake that I made the other day in the video. I, I took all the fruit off of it and I'm having, um, I put uh, a can of um, cherry pie filling on it. And uh, I think they'll all like that. I said by the time you have about three of these, you're pretty full. You really, really are. I like the simple little meals. I have cooked a lot of different things. And of course, at Thanksgiving, Christmas time, you know, you go all out and you're, you're really in your kitchen and you're cooking some heavy heavy dishes in there, and I love doing all that too. It's just, uh, when you want something quick and easy, there's nothing wrong with having something like this. These little Pillsbury um, pastry doughs, uh, they're light and fluffy and nice, and they have a good flavor to them, they really do. If you like making pastry, then go ahead and make uh, your pastry and do this. <clears throat> that would be even better, but to tell you the truth, the recipe that this gal gave to my mom, it, it called for this, just these little crescent rolls. They may look a little funny, <laughs> but they're very good. They're 
very, very good. Okay, so now you can pop them into the oven. You can do a couple of things. You can dust them with, um, and I'll get that too. Oh, John, I'm forgetting things tonight. Thought I had it all lined up. Sometimes I forget things. You can dust them before they go into the oven with a little butter, which is always nice because it is going to give it the nice golden, golden brown color that we want. Just very lightly. Because when they come out of the oven, I like to dust them again with butter. They already have the salt and pepper in there, so you don't have to worry about that. It's already done. So I guess this will be another two-part video tonight that I will uh, pop these in the oven, and then when they're done, a good, it's gonna vary from oven to oven, uh, 10 minutes, maybe 15 at the most. You'll just have to kind of judge and look in your oven and, and see. I haven't made them in so long, so I really can't tell you time-wise. I just know, get your oven a little hot uh, tonight to cook these. And once you do, uh, then keep an eye on them. So I'll be right back after um, I cook these and we'll bring them out and I'll show you the rest of the meal. Catch you in part two.